Welcome to the second edition of the Tice TV Festival of Installation. I'm Kyle Hedin, host of the Floor Academy podcast, owner and lead installer of Illustrious Hardwoods, and guest host for this year's Festival of Installation from the International Surface Event. I'll be here each week as we premiere a new installation demonstration. Today's episode is a Tech Zone demo presentation on hardwood color and finishes from the National Wood Flooring Association. Watch and gather up the expert tips and insights from the NWFA trainers. Roll the episode. Hey everyone, Jason Elquist with Blackhawk Floors. I'm one of the regional instructors for the National Wood Flooring Association and I appreciate the opportunity to come to you virtually today to uh, do a demo for some uh, coloring and some texturing of some wood. Um, in the past we've done uh, a lot of this and, and most of it's there always done with uh, an actual audience. So this is going to be a little different. So um, I'm not going to be fielding any questions, of course, uh, live right now, but I'm going to walk you through the process of what we're going to be doing here. Um, I hope everyone is doing well and, uh, and I wish everybody the best. Um, wish we could all be together, which will happen hopefully soon. Um, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to wire brush this section of floor. This is a, a reclaimed floor. Um, it's got a lot of texture already with, with character and movement, wormholes. Um, a lot of open grain, but it is a mixture of a lot of different woods. Um, elm, ash, there's some hickory, pecan, um, a little bit of everything in this. Um, there's a piece of beech in here, a little bit of everything. But I wanted to bring this section of my floor up to date, as well as be able to give you guys an opportunity to see kind of what we're doing. The wire brush textured floors are extremely popular right now. Uh, we're going to be doing that on this entire section, then we're going to be breaking it up in, I believe, four pieces four different colors we'll put down here, four different effects that kind of work along with the colors that we've been doing um, in the industry as far as um, some of the grays. Um, I'm gonna put down some iron acetate. I'm gonna bleach a section of this floor, maybe two, um, to, to kind of lessen some of the character that you see in it, some of the coloration that you see in this, kind of bring that a little softer um, so that we can uh, artificially change the character or the grade of the floor just a little bit. This is just one of the wire brush machines that it's out on the market now um, that has the, this is a bone of power drive, but it has the capability of, of uh, uh, wire brushing the floor with the proper attachments. Um, I'm just going to walk through that real quick. It might get a little noisy, uh, but uh, I'm going to show you kind of the technique that we use to wire brush and then uh, um, we'll get later on. This is going to take a couple of days to do just because of all the coloration uh, that we're going to add to this floor and the techniques. Um, and dry time. So you may see me in a different shirt and another cut. It, it was probably, hopefully it's tomorrow. Um, but uh, any questions, please feel free to contact us and, and I hope you get a lot out of this. So thank you very much for uh, watching and I'll go ahead and get started with that. Um, so with the wire brushing, one of the, the two things with this machine and, and that we use, um, water is, is one of the biggest things that we'll use. It does two things. It's gonna open the grain, uh, create the, the grain rays that we want and cools the brushes as we buff the floor with these wire brush heads um, to kind of pull that soft grain out. Really not texturing the floor other than we're just kind of ripping that soft grain out of there. Um, so I'm working in small sections. I usually go through and I'll wet the floor uh, as we uh, as we go. So I'm going to go through and show you, but I'm going to work in a small section. I did just a little tiny bit yesterday. Hopefully you guys can all see this. I'm not going to really move the camera around a whole lot, but this is just water. Um, I don't have anything else in this but water. Um, and I'm going to work in a small section. What I want to do is wet this section.
enter the boring competition. The true reason. <laughs> I wanted them to step it up. <laughs> if you're competitive at all, and I hope you are, the competition is for you. The installation competition has always been important. It's always been a very big draw at Tice and Surfaces to highlight the incredible talent that is out there in the installation community right now and put a bigger light on the work that they do and the skills and mastery they have. Back in a day when they used to have the competition and I was never involved with that. Never had enough confidence in myself. So I make up every excuse that I can not to do something because he didn't have the confidence that you could be as good as the next guy. When in reality, you don't know if you don't try. You get a great sense of belonging. There's people who understand you, what you're going through, the different challenges. But also you have this great opportunity to network with all these different industry experts, manufacturers. Whether some of these installers, you know, believe it or not, you have influence. I heard about the installation competition last year. I competed, went to the finals, I didn't win, so I came back to try to win it again. Mainly just testing your skill against people that are supposed to be the best. I've been in CFI for now 22 years, and to be able to meet other installers that have the same mindset of quality installation is a, is a big plus and it's a big value to the industry. There's a need for pride in this industry, especially at the installation level. That competition is the most visible thing we do, and it allows people to shine. It creates pride within the industry so that people have an opportunity to rise to a higher level, to say that I'm better, that I've invested, that I've certified, I've done whatever it takes to be the best at what I do. So I brought this over to the floor to show you kind of where the grain tears just a tiny bit. Um, this floor still got some moisture on it um, or in it. And so once this is totally dried and I hit this with uh, the wire brush, that'll all just um, kind of disappear. So I'll uh, go ahead and let this completely dry. All right, so I was uh, able to get everything uh, finished, uh, uh, wire brushing and cleaned up, got this floor divided into four different sections now. Um, and I kind of decided what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to bleach this one here, uh, this section. Uh, the bleach I'm going to use a two, is a two-part bleach, self-neutralizing. Um, so it's going to take a couple of days to, um, to neutralize. I believe it's 72 hours. I've got to read the bottle. Um, always read the To bleach this section, usually I use a, a paint sprayer, or a, a weed sprayer rather, um, just like I uh, was water popping prior um, for the bleach. Uh, we apply the iron acetate in the same fashion um, typically and then we'll use a, a t-bar and then um, a small flat pad a synthetic pad for around the perimeter this one's small enough um, that i'm just going to go ahead and use a paint out so the iron acetate is um Essentially, it's vinegar and steel wool. Um, I've got some white distilled vinegar. I uh, use four-out steel wool. I don't know if you can tell, but the color of this is actually um, pretty clear. The dark you see at the top is just the steel wool. As I uh, pull it out um, or apply, put the steel wool into the, the uh, vinegar, I actually will tear it down into smaller pieces, kind of just spread it out a little bit, um, and then stuff it in the hole. Um, this I started on, uh, well, it be 72 hours ago. So um, almost exactly. And um, it stays clear. Sometimes it'll turn a dark color if you expose it to uh, that steel wool starts to oxidize and that sometimes that rust will change the color. I've heard of people using all sorts of things, other things to, to color it. Um, if you're putting it on a, a floor, you're trying to kill um, some of the blue color, the blue green tint that you'll get with this sometime. So I've added red food coloring, um, opposite of green on this color spectrum, that blue green, trying to kill some of that. 
Um, red food coloring essentially is like a dye, um, and it works pretty well for that. This um, should cut, turn a nice color. It should be pretty reactive. Uh, we'll see how it goes, but I apply it basically the same way as I apply my bleach, ideally using the bug sprayer and then a T-bar to smooth everything out, make it nice and even. Um, I've never been a fan of ragging on um, any effects like this. I just don't think they go on even enough. Uh, whereas this one should be really nice. We should see some nice colors tomorrow with this and really muted. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this camera. I'm gonna do the other one over here and uh, I'll uh, do a quick version of the, of the iron acetate there, so. Do with my traditional stain application, uh, my preference is to rag it on by hand, um, like I'm going to do here, and then in a bigger floor, I would actually um, buff the stain off the floor at that point. Um, it's just faster removal, more consistent removal. Um, I think it gets more of the stain off the floor, so you're not left with um, heavy spots on the floor. Not a huge fan of buffing stain on. It doesn't use nearly as much stain. I think you get a deeper, richer color when you actually rag it on. It's just the fact that the, the stain is going on at a higher rate. Um, I think it sits on there a little better. So um, this is a uh, stain um, from Bone Eye. I already forgot the color. I believe it's Bark is the color. So it should be nice and dark. Should not lend itself well doing a, um, a ceruse if we decide to do that, um, a darker color over the top. So, or a lighter color over the top if we decide to. So I'm gonna go ahead, I know I'm starting to get a lot of crazy lighting in here, I apologize. Um, I'm gonna quick before uh, this light, the sun drops a little lower, I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, section of floor dyed. Um, I did put one coat on it, I went really light, um, just went way lighter than I wanted it to. I wanna darken it up and um, show you that it can actually uh, 
we can alleviate a lot of the, the issues from um, lap marks and stuff like that. I don't feel, feel that the first one was a very fair representation of what the guys like to do in the field and, and go with a little bit darker. So I'm gonna do that. Um, then I'll probably leave, uh, it'll probably be everything I do for the day here on this. Um, and I'll come back in tomorrow and see how much everything has changed. This floor will continue to lighten up. Iron acetate will continue to get a little darker. Um, these floors should stay pretty much the same, but just like I talked about before, um, water soluble dye. Um, and uh, I already got some on my pants, so that's great. But uh, yeah, it's just a, a pigment and a, and a solvent. There's no binders in it, so it soaks in. Um, really pretty deep. The, the pigment's really, really fine. Soaks in really deep to the wood. Um, you can do multiple coats because um, we don't have to worry about it sticking to anything. So if, for instance, uh, uh, you wanted to, to go darker with this with another coat, um, which is often the case, you could do just that, do another coat. Um, and many times, if you're trying to achieve a particular color, I will do multiple coats just to make sure everything comes out nice and even so you don't have any lap marks. So. That's better. Good morning, day two of uh, colors and textures on uh, wood floors. So, um, did a little bit of touch-ups this morning, had a few spots where when I sanded against this edge, trying to, of course, be careful on this, uh, not to damage the, the walnut or uh, the uh, Santos mahogany behind me. Um, I did miss a little, a couple little spots where I didn't get wire brushed all the way to the edge. So I went through this morning and touched those up, um, and now I'm ready to apply stain. I'm uh, going to kind of do some two-tone effects on some of these. Um, I don't remember what color. I think I'm doing white there. Um, so that one won't really won't really show a whole lot other than I'm going to leave one section in it as natural just to show that this entire floor is the same species um, or same species. Is, and um, so they'll be able to uh, see that we can do multiple colors. So many times people don't understand what we can do with, with what they have. And um, for instance, a walnut floor, we can bleach that to basically almost this color. So um, there's a lot of options we have when we're dealing with colors. So I'm gonna go forward now. I'm just gonna kind of wipe on some stains, probably talk more about this in the live section when we're uh, kind of semi-face-to-face -face on the, the live chat portion. Um, but this is gonna be kind of a standard wipe on, uh, rag off type of a, a stain application. So. Hopefully we can chat on the, uh, the live section. I'll look forward to that and um, answering any additional questions you guys have. But uh, I hope this uh, has been good for you and um, you've learned something, you picked something up. From myself and the team at the International Surface Event, we thank you for watching the 2022 Tice TV Festival of Installation. Make sure to join myself and the rest of the industry 
at Tice 2023, January 31st through February 2nd in Las Vegas for the ultimate in flooring stone and tile sourcing and education. If you can't travel to Las Vegas, you should definitely join everyone in Las Vegas in the Tice Live virtual event, Vegas edition, the smart event produced by Tice that occurs alongside the in-person Las Vegas event. The smart event is hosted online as a private Facebook group so you can connect socially and soak up the event. Either way, I'll see you there. Look mom, I made that.